So here's the airway tree. If you're going to say we're scanning for consolidation in kids, you have to accept uh, that 95% or more of pediatric consolidations communicate to the pleura. Because what you're doing is pleural scanning, right? If there's one millimeter of air in between your pleura and where your pneumonia starts, you won't see it because that one millimeter of air is going to create the typical A-line reverberation appearance. Uh, and then how do pediatric pneumonias occur? Well, in well kids, uh, the vast majority of our eMERGE um, cohort, they occur because of a mucus plug that happens somewhere in a lower airway in a kid with viral illness. And behind that mucus plug, a few bacteria are seated, bacteria that would normally be cleared by our mucociliary uh, elevator, only now it can't because it's plugged in there. And so then it grows into a little pocket of pus that can at some point make its way up the airway tree and start to spill over into other areas or can erode through uh, some of the uh, pulmonary structures and start to spread. So sonographically, the way I conceptualize this consolidation evolution that um, some papers allude to, but I don't think we have that kind of controlled study of like, let's take a pneumonia in evolution and watch all these things happen. I think you would need to do some kind of like animal pig model, maybe where you like inject a little bit of Staph aureus into a, a plugged area of lung. It would be a very tricky study to do. But my conceptualization is that you get a mucus plug, you start to have some mixture of uh, resorption and of infiltration. And the first things you're going to see are some areas where like the pleura looks a little bit wet and you have a few B lines. And then if you um, look at that same area a few days later, after those bacteria have had a chance to grow, you'll see a few other things. So you see some B lines, you'll see small subpleural subcentimeter areas that people will refer to as consolidation that I prefer to just call lesions. Uh, you see deep to these solidified lesions, you've got air signal. So here's the signal of air, and this is like a tightly packed kind of confluent beeline appearance. And there's another feature going on in this view, a couple other features. There's some uh, fluid here. And there's relatively little lung sliding over here. So these are all some of the soft features where I might look at this and say, well, it's a subcentimeter subpleural consolidation, so I think it's just viral changes. But these other things, like there's a bunch of B lines over here, there's no good pleural sliding here, might make me think, actually, this could be uh, early bacterial consolidation. And that's where the literature gets a little funny is some of it when they say, well, this is pneumonia, they'll take this picture and label it as pneumonia rather than just large consolidations. So that's another thing for us to sort out in future research. So maybe two days later, we come back and we look at this kid's lungs again. And you see a lot of B lines. And then, oh, for a second, you see this larger lesion with branching white punctate stuff within it. So one of the things I want you guys to think about in terms of a, a concept is that there's this wet edge to uh, pneumonia consolidation. So the consolidation itself is going to be solidified, right? Or it's going to be uh, a dominantly liquid thing. It's going to be um, something that the beam doesn't fight beelines uh, to show you. It communicates to the pleura, it's right there. It's like what we used to call in uh, uh, New York a Goomba sitting right under the, the pleura. And it's easy for you to look at and say there's an abnormality. But sometimes the clue that I have to go looking for that is this wet edge. Think about the pneumonia as like a, a pyramid that goes from that airway tree and communicates to the pleura. And think about what's on the rim of that. It's not gonna be the sharp transition from here you're solid and here your air, there's going to be a bunch of B lines all around the edge that makes that transition from I'm pus to I'm wet pleura uh, to I'm uh, normal lung. And it might not even be wet pleura. You might see those B lines arise now because you can access that area of the lung. You can shoot through that consolidated lung 
you're a centimeter deep into the lung, but your beam's now at that transition point where it moves from consolidation back to air. So you might get reverberation, you might get a bunch of beelines arising. We'll say it's like, I say, it's the transition point back to air. So that's what you're seeing happen at the deeper part of this lesion, transition back to air. And just so you guys know, that image that we just showed, it corresponds to uh, the right anterior chest of this patient who had this x-ray at the same time. So people will often ask like, well, the ultrasound findings, like how would the x-ray look in comparison? And one of the things we believe is that the ultrasound findings precede the x-ray findings. For me, that was a pretty noticeable abnormality in the lung. And I would look at this chest x-ray and say, maybe there's something going on, but I don't know that I'd call this pneumonia. And this was a kid that seemed clinically like they had pneumonia, got admitted partly on the strength of that um, ultrasound. The next day got a repeat x-ray because it wasn't necessarily believed. And here's the day later evolution on x-ray. Let's say we let it go another few hours. So now we're getting into these ones that are like, ah, this is more classic for consolidation. You have that wet edge, right? Areas of confluent bee lines over here, but more noticeably, you've got this solidified area with these white branching bronchograms within it. And maybe we've got even a day later than that, again, consolidation, a transition to air that surrounds it deeply. For the fellows, what part of the body do you think this is? Is it the anterior, the lateral, the posterior? I'm stumping them. Posterior. Why do you say posterior, Magali? Muscles. muscles, okay. So over time, this will like just become a simple thing for you. You'll look at the diaphragm, this like three line structure here. So like here's an outer edge of it, here's an inner edge of it, and then there's a, a hyperechoic connected tissue core. And you'll look at the solid organ deep to it. And in this case, I look at that and I see, oh, here's a renal pyramid. And this is a kidney, so I'm posterior. Uh, and then the larger like, uh, oh, well, that, lobe of the lung or, or that lobule of the lung is whited out on my x-ray will have more of this kind of appearance where as you scan you suddenly hit something that looks like a big pie wedge that has things like uh, in the lower area here you've got fluid bronchograms you've got punctate air bronchograms you've got transition to air at a bunch of these different wedges and you have a small amount of likely reactive uh, pleural effusion Diaphragm diving deep at the end of the clip here. Okay, so the difference between static and air bronchograms. You'll encounter a lot of literature and a lot of talk with people saying that a static air bronchogram is pathognomonic for atelectasis, a dynamic air bronchogram pathognomonic for consolidation for true pneumonia for bacterial infiltrate. I believe the truth in kids is that it is much more mixed picture and you'll see in what I believe is a true bacterial pneumonia, both static and dynamic air bronchograms. And that sometimes I see just static air bronchograms in a kid that I'm clinically and on ultrasound convinced has bacterial pneumonia. I think the primary literature that brings up these ideas is almost all from an adult ICU cohort. Uh, it doesn't really refer to fluid bronchograms, which we see a ton in small kids. Uh, so I would say the jury, in my mind, is still out on applying that kind of separation of what static versus dynamic air bronchograms tell you about. But let's talk about what they are. So a static air bronchogram is one where you've got a bunch of bright bubbles within an airway tree, but the bubbles don't seem to move as the patient breathes. The whole tree moves up and down under your probe without there being the appearance of bubbling within the airway as opposed to images like this, where you watch the patient breathe and you see these bubbles get pulled up and down as they do.